Hello and welcome to The English Academy. This is Darina here and today we're going to continue talking about Quizlet and how we can use Quizlet effectively to help our learners. In the previous video that I'm going to link below, I have talked about Quizlet from the student point of view. So how do I actually learn the set of terms that I'm provided by my teacher or that I find on Quizlet itself or that someone sends me a link to? So which steps do I actually take to learn all those words? Today we're going to talk about Quizlet from a teacher's perspective. So how do you actually create those Quizlet sets that would be helpful and not confusing to your learners? Let's take a look at the example of me creating the set that I used in the previous video. I hope you find this video useful. Please share it with the other teachers and also share the video with your students so they can also create sets for themselves. Or you could ask your students to create Quizlet sets as part of their homework. This is also going to be very valuable as when they try and make those cards, they are going to automatically start learning the words. Please subscribe to this channel for more videos that I'm trying to post regularly. And after watching this video, please write in the comments how you create your Quizlet sets. Okay, so we first go to the website quizlet.com and we click on create a study set. Here you can give the appropriate name to your set. I'm saying idioms and I am also going to say where that's coming from. I usually copy the link or the name of the course book for instance. And now we're going to be looking for the idioms that we want our students to learn. So first of all, you need to read and find the ones that you want. So the first one will be marking up the wrong tree. And I always make this uh, an infinitive. So not barking, but bark up the wrong tree. Copy paste the definition. Right. And also provide the example sentence. Here it's important that you give gaps instead of the actual word because if in your example or in your definition you have the actual term or idiom in our case, then there really is no point studying this flashcard. The answer is too obvious otherwise. So our next idiom Of course, now we're adding in the idioms from the website where we are copy pasting from, but you can definitely use Quizlet from course book vocabulary items, use those, and then you can just type up the words yourself rather than copy paste them from a website as I'm doing here for demonstration purposes. So let's look up for the third idiom. Let's see. Okay, bend over backwards. As a bit of a control freak, I make sure that things that don't need to be capitalized are not capitalized unless it's a sentence. Copy paste the example sentence. And now I'm going to create the sentence so it's different than the original one you see on the website uh, to make sure it's appropriate to my learners or the person who's going to be learning this Quizlet set. And actually, in the previous video, you saw how I was learning this Quizlet set. So this sentence is appropriate to my life rather than a company that's always bending over backwards. OK. So let's look for the next idiom. 
and again I change that capital letter into a small letter. Okay, here as well, no capitals were not needed. And here I'm writing up a sentence by myself. So I did not like the example that was provided. Let's say that I know a person called Alex who always bites off more than he can chew. And so when I see that example, I'll picture the person and this will be a good association for the idiom. OK, make sure that you give your idiom gaps or the term is written with gaps. I'm missing one gap here. And also, if you need to say, for example, Alex always bites, so leave the S there. This will help a little bit. So let's go and find our next idiom. OK, so that's cry wolf. Copy paste the definition. OK, so I have actually found a good website that provides very good definitions in student friendly language. But very often, if you are copy pasting definitions from a dictionary, let's say, then the definitions sometimes are more difficult than the actual term or the idiom or the phrase. So do make sure that the definition is as simple as possible. Let's say a few levels lower than the actual term or than the student's level. We don't need to confuse the students with our definitions. They need to be very, very simple. And also, if you can make the example relevant to your student or to your group of students, then that's the best thing that you can do. OK, so the next idiom here. Let's copy the definition. OK, the example. All right. And here I decide to change the example sentence to something relevant to everyone. OK. Now let's give gaps to our idiom. And sometimes it's a good idea to leave a piece of the phrase or expression or idiom there. So for instance, I left me. Um, so that will be easier to try and remember the idiom. So the next one, that will be here on the grape wine. OK, so you'll see that the website prefers American spelling. I changed that to British spelling. My computer knows that that's the spelling I prefer. And also the example sentence. Okay. Make sure that you provide the number of gaps that's equivalent to the number of words. So let's say if your idiom is four words and you just provide one gap, then that's not really helpful for your students. OK, so here we have the definition. The example sentence, which is not really relevant to my life whatsoever, and therefore I'm going to change it slightly there. Also, when you type in your term and 
you click on definition, Quizlet is pretty clever. So it sometimes offers you very good definitions, which are even better than the ones you were planning to provide or the ones you found online. So you could use that, simply click on it from the options that you see. Another idea is to click on the option, one of the options that you're provided with, and then adapt it a little bit. So it's faster to edit something than to type it up from scratch. So you can also consider doing that. Okay, and our next idiom here, right? Leave no stone unturned. We're going to have 10. This is the pre last one. So the definition. And our example sentence. All right. And now the gaps. So I'm keeping the word no to help a little bit. And our final idiom. That's missed the boat. OK, so this was a lovely website that I managed to find with very simplistic, nice definitions, good examples. But it's only fair to provide the link to where you found something or to copyright the dictionary or the course book that you are using to create those sets. So in case the students want to refer to that website or maybe use the book that you are using um, or maybe even buy that book. So they need to know where it's coming from. It should not be a secret unless it's been personally created by you. OK, and here we're also changing the sentence a little bit to make it more context relatable. All right. So here we are done with all the 10 idioms and now we can make our Quizlet set a little bit fancier to learn. Now, here we need to consider the fact that if you add pictures and you want to add your own images or images from the Internet, you will need to have a paid for Quizlet account. I do have that. I find it very handy. But if you're new to Quizlet, there is no need to pay for it right away. For quite a few years, I was using Quizlet without paying for it and the functions that were available for free were enough for me while I was getting used to Quizlet and trying to understand whether Quizlet is something that I want to be using at all times. So if you're not paying for Quizlet, you can still add images to the terms you're providing your students with. And very often the images would be slightly limited. So if you are creative and you want to do something like I am doing here, where I want some specific image, then definitely consider buying the paid option. So here I couldn't find an image uh, because I don't want to have an image with the idiom written on it. So I'm just making a screenshot and getting rid of the actual idiom there. So and then you just drag and drop it into the box there. OK. So you could definitely type up the idiom. This is an obvious thing to say, but you could also copy paste it or you could copy paste the definition you're looking for. I prefer to find some memorable images that would stick in the student's memory and they'll see it and it will associate with the actual phrase. So let's see. Very often on Google or on Pinterest, you can find so many nice images. And when you spend the time looking for some nice images, uh, students really appreciate that. They, they definitely see the amount of work you've put in. So here you can see the Quizlet images that are provided for free. Um, 
you could definitely choose one of those. But for this idiom, I didn't find any anyone that I liked. So if you just type in idiom, that can be helpful as well to try and find um, the image that's going to work. I didn't like any. So I thought of finding something from Tom and Jerry, if you remember the begging Tom. So it's not here. <laughs> Sometimes you can get overexcited about finding the images and that can take a bit of time. But the good news is that you can reuse your Quizlet sets many, many times by adding them to new classes, to other groups of students. And if there is a specific course book that you're using while teaching or in a language institution, then you can just create a good set once and then always use it. All right, so our next idiom. All right, so here is the definition that you might use that can help you find the word, uh, the image, sorry. So I liked that. It does show me the meaning of the idiom. So I'm going to use it. And I'm also going to change the sentence. So it relates to the image that the students are going to see while learning this set. even a bit more context. <laughs> All right, so the next one. Here I should have definitely used an image of XOXO Gossip Girl, but not everyone has watched Gossip Girl, so let's find something else. So the image with the girl and the grapes and the phone on top, that was a pretty good one. But of course, I'm never looking for the easy ways around things. <laughs> so I'm going to find something else. All right, let's use these girls. Right, so hit the books. Let me see if there is a nice image here available on Quizlet already. You could actually always check the images that are available because, of course, it's way quicker to just choose an image that's already there than go onto Google, save it, drag and drop it. So do check. Um, but out of experience, I know that um, perfectionists are never satisfied with what's provided there, easily available. So that's why I always try and find the images outside of Quizlet. Okay. So we can use this or this. So probably the previous one is better. Let's go for this image. All right. And the image to our final idiom. You don't necessarily need to have images uh, or you might have an image to some of your cards. So let's say if you have 10 cards, you might just really need an image for one or two and that's also fine. Now, another option that you can use uh, is something that has recently been added onto Quizlet, highlighting. So at the moment you have yellow, blue and pink colors. And this is also available only if you have the paid version of Quizlet. Again, you don't necessarily need to do this. You don't need to put the text in bold or italics or underline it or highlight it. This is not necessary, but this just makes them look more presentable and aesthetically pleasing. So. Again, it takes you a minute to do it, um, 
and it is a paid subscription. So if you do have a paid subscription, definitely spend that extra minute. But if you don't, that's all right. Another thing you can do with a paid subscription, which I really like, is you can record the audio by yourself. So the audio will be available for your students um, through Quizlet, but that will be the automatic audio. You could record the audio, delete it if you're unhappy with it, record it again and the students will hear your voice while learning and listening to the idioms. Okay so now we are ready and let's see what else we can do when our set is ready. So definitely do check all of it. Does it look good? You can edit your set at any time if you notice a typo and you can also change the order of your flashcards if you need that. All right. So if you click this plus button, you can add this set to any class that you have already created. Again, if you click the pencil, you will do you will get to the same bit to edit your Quizlet set. So if you click the arrow, you can send the Quizlet set to your students' email addresses, or you could copy the link and send it again through email or through WhatsApp or Telegram. And finally, if you click export, you will find that you can save your sets and that can be in any format that you prefer, either a table, glossary, small, medium or large cards. So the medium cards are very handy if you want to use them with your young learners. So you print them out, you can laminate them and then you can do many different things with your flashcards in class. You can also print out or save a copy of or take screenshots of the test and then you can also click right click on the flashcards and you can save those in pdf and print them out